So I know it's been a few days since I did another part slash chapter of this book, but I am, I've been very sick, so I wanted to wait until I calmed down a little with the sickness until I record another one, because I wouldn't want to like blow my nose in the middle of a video, because it's gross, so. And my little brother is up there, playing with his Legos, trying to be quiet, which is not a good strong suit for him, but. Yeah. Okay, if you remember, um, Gemma just met Kai in the coffee shop, and that's all we know so far, so we are going to continue from right there and go, how long is this, to the next, actually not that long at all, I might do two of them. Yeah, probably going to do two of them. So, this will be part two and part three. Awesome. Okay. Uh, things changed then. I slowed down while everything around me sped up. It's amazing, really, what a, a tiny bit of powder can do. How are you feeling, you asked? While you were watching me, your eyes wide. I opened my mouth to tell you I was fine, but I didn't understand what came out. It was just a jumble of noises. My tongue, w my tongue too thick and heavy to form words. I remember the lights turning into blurs of blazing fire. I remember the air conditioning chilling my arms. The smell of coffee smudging into the smell of e eucalyptus. Your hand was tight around mine as you grabbed me and took me and you stole me away. I must have tipped your coffee cup when I stumbled to get up. I found a burn mark on my leg later. A pink stain running down my left knee. I still had it. It turned a bit wrinkly like elephant skin you made me walk fast i thought or you were or you were taking me back to my flight leading me to the gate where my parents were waiting it was a long time much longer than, much longer than i'd remembered and when you dragged me along those moving sidewalks it felt like we were flying you, you I can't speak you talked to people in uniforms and pulled me to you like i was your girlfriend i i nodded to them and smiled you led me up some stairs. My knees were bent at first, and it made me giggle. No, my knees wouldn't bend at first, and it made me giggle. Then my kneecaps turned into marshmallows. Flush air hit me, smelling like flowers and cigarettes and beer. Uh, there were other people walking, talking softly, shrieking like monkeys when they laugh. You pulled me through some shrubs and then around the corner of a building. A twig caught in my hair. You were... We were near the trash bins. I could smell rotting fruit. You pulled me to you again, <sighs> tilting my face and saying something. Everything about you was fuzzy, floating on the fumes of the bins. Your beautiful mouth was moving like a caterpillar. I reached out and tried to catch it. You took my fingers in yours. The warmth of you shot through, shot from my fingertips through my fingertips right up to my arm. You said something else. I nodded. Some part of me understood. I started getting undressed. I leaned against you as I took off my jeans and handed, uh, you handed me new clothes. A long skirt, heel, shoes with heels. Th then you turned away. I could not read today. I, I must have put them on. I don't know how. And then you took your top off before you put a different shirt on. I stuck my head out and... Stuck my hand out and felt felt your back, warm, firm, brown as bark. I don't know what I was thinking or even if I was, but I remember needing to touch you. I remember the feeling of skin. It's strange to remember touch more than thought, but my fingers still tingle with it. You did a, you did other things too. You put something scratchy on my head and something dark over my eyes. I moved slowly. My brain couldn't keep up. There was a dull thud of something landing in a metal can, and there was something shiny on my lips. A lipstick. And you gave me tar uh, chocolate. Rich, dark, soft, a liquid in the middle. I think this got even more confusing. When I looked down, I couldn't see my feet. When we started to walk, I felt like I was walking. I was just walking on the stumps of my legs. I started to panic. 
but you put your arm around me. It was warm and solid. Safe. I shut my eyes and tried to think. I couldn't remember where I left my bag. I couldn't remember anything. People surrounded us. You pushed me into the middle of a crowd of blurred out faces and color. You must have thought of everything. A ticket, a new passport, a route through. I had to get past security. Who was... What? I can't speak. I can't read either. Was it most carefully planned... Was it the most carefully planned steal ever, or just luck? I can't... It can't have been that easy to get me through a uh, Bangkok airport and onto a different plane without anyone knowing, not even me. You kept feeding me chocolates. That rich, dark taste always in my mouth, clinging to, clinging to my teeth. But before you, I love chocolate. Now, even the smell makes me sick. I blacked out after the third. I was sitting somewhere, uh, leaning against you. I, I was cold and needed your body heat. Uh, you remembered something to someone else about me. Uh, too much to drink, uh, you said. We're celebrating. Uh, then we were crammed in a toilet stall. The toilet stall, there was a chute of air as the contents of the bowl were sucked away beneath me, and we were walking again. Another airport, maybe. Uh, more people, the smell of flowers, sweet, tropical, and fresh. Um, and as if it had just rained. And it was dark. A night time, but not cold. As you dragged me from... Um, as you dragged me through a parking lot, I started to wake up. I started fighting you. I tried to scream, but you took me f behind a truck and uh, pushed a cloth over my mouth. The world went hazy again. I sank back into you. All I remember after that was... The number out jolt. I can't speak. The numbed out jolt and sway of being in a car. The engine grumbled on forever. But what I do, what I do remember, is the waking up part and the heat. It clawed up my throat. I tried to, it tried to stop me breathing. It made me want to go back. It wait. It made me want to black out again. And then there was pain. Okay, so that is the end of the part one. It's only been seven and a half minutes. So I think the next part will be like two pages. So I might need the next part. Yeah, yeah. I'll be the next part. At least you hadn't tied me to the bed. Uh, victims in films are always tied to the bed. Still, I couldn't really move. But each time I shifted my body, even a little sick rose in my throat. And my head spun. There was a thin sheet over me. I felt like I was in the middle of a fire. I opened my eyes. Everything twisted and turned. Beige and blurred. I was in a room. The walls were wood log planks bolted to the bolted at the corners. My, uh, the, the light hurt my eyes and I couldn't see you. I twisted my head around cautiously looking. I tasted vomit in my mouth. I swallowed it. My throat was thick, rasping, useless. I tried my... I closed my eyes again. Uh, tried uh, breathing deeply. I mentally... Checked down my body, my arms and legs. My arms were there, legs, feet. I wiggled my fingers, all working. I felt down my stomach. I had a t-shirt on, and my bra was cutting into my chest. My legs were bare. My jeans gone. I felt the sheet beneath me, and then I rested my hand. against the top of my thigh. My skin went hot and sticky almost immediately. My watch wasn't on my wrist. I ran my hand over my underpants and felt through them. I didn't know what I thought I would find. What I thought I would find. And even what I was expecting. Or maybe blood or torn flesh, pain, but there was nothing like that. I had you taken my underwear off? Had you put yourself inside? And if so, why had you bothered to put them back on? I haven't raped you. I s swung my head around. I tried to find you. My eyes still weren't seeing clearly. You were behind me. I could hear that. I tried uh, pushing myself to the edge of the bed away from you, but my arms weren't strong enough. Uh, they shook and then collapsed me into the sheets. Uh, the blood was pumping through me. Uh, though I, though, 
I could almost hear my body start to flow and wake up. I tried my voice. Amanda's to whimper. My mouth was against the pillowcase. I heard you. I heard you somewhere uh, taking a step. Your clothes are beside the bed. I flinched at your voice. Where were you? How close? I opened my eyes a little. It didn't hurt too much. And next to the bed, a new pair of jeans were neatly folded on a wooden chair. My coat wasn't there, and neither were my shoes. Instead, underneath the chair was a brown pair of a leather boots. Are you coming in? Yeah. Okay. Back. Uh, lace up and sensible. Not mine. I could hear you taking steps uh, coming toward me. I tried curling up. I tried to get away. Everything was heavy, slow, but my brain was working and my heart was racing. I was in a bad place. I knew that much. I didn't know how I got there. I didn't know what you'd done to me. I heard the floorboards creak a couple more times, sound shooting, uh, shooting adrenaline in my veins. A pair of late a cargo pants stopped in front of me. My eyes were level uh, with the material between your knees and your crotch. A level with the reddish dirt stains there. You didn't say anything. I heard you. I heard my breathing get faster. I gripped the sheets, forced my eyes to look up. I didn't stop until I reached your face. My face, uh, my breath faltered for a second. Then, I don't know why, but I'd half expected you to be someone else. I didn't want the person standing there beside me to have the same face I found so attractive at the airport. But you were there, I mean, you were there, all right. The blue eyes, the blondish hair, the tiny scar. Only you didn't look beautiful this time, just evil. <laughs> your face was blank, those blue eyes seemed cold. Your lips thin, um, I tried the sheets, I... Oh no. I pulled the sheets up as far as I could, leaving only my eyes uncovered, watching you. The rest of me was stiff and frozen. You stood there. You look creepy. <laughs> you look creepy just standing there. No <laughs> way. Stop. Come on, please. Okay, we're gonna stop. We'll catch. Um ba 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 ba. Um oh, the rest of me was stiff and frozen. Oh, you stood there waiting for me to speak. Waiting for the questions. When they didn't come, you answered anyway. I brought you here, you said. You felt sick because of the effects of the drugs. Uh, you'll feel weird for a while. Swallow, breathing, a vertigo, nausea, hallucinations. Oh, your face was spinning as you spoke. I shut my eyes. Uh, there were tiny stars behind my eyelid, the whole galaxy of tiny spinning stars. I heard you shuffling toward me, getting closer. I tried my voice. Why? I was sort I had to take you. The bed creaked and my body rose a little as you sat down on the mattress. I dragged myself away. I tried pushing my legs to the floor, but still they wouldn't go. The whole world seemed to turn around me. I was, I was going to slide off. I pointed my head away and expected uh, to be sick at any moment. It didn't come. I hugged my legs toward me. My chest was tight from crying. Where am I? Uh, you paused before answering. I heard you take a breath and then sigh it out. Your clothing rustled as you changed your position. I realized that, I realized then that I couldn't hear any other sounds anywhere other than yours. You're here, he said. You're safe. And that is the end of that part. And that is the end of what I'm going to read today. Ooh. So, um, this is part two and part three. I can't so, part three, uh-huh. Well, I'll get that for Um, so, I will try and get part four to you this week. Okay. If I don't, then definitely this weekend. So, yep. I hope you enjoyed part two and part three of the book. So, yeah. Thank you for listening. Bye.